Yes, I am back and it certainly feels great to be making YouTube videos once again for you to be able to watch. Long-term viewers of the channel may have noticed I've not made a video for a couple of months now and that's purely because my day job has been keeping me incredibly busy. Not only that, instead of flying drones to bring content to you for YouTube, I've actually more been flying them commercially in anger, creating uh, content for some of my clients, including filming the world's first chemical tanker actually fitted with Ventofoil sails. Yes, that's right, a ship fitted with sails. I think we're going backwards in technology. We sort of started out there. But on this video, I'm going to be bringing you all the details of the new DJI Fly 1.13.0, give you all the lowdown on everything that I have found, including one really weird uh, little bug and something that you really want to make sure isn't checked because it could enable DJI to check through your flight records without you knowing and who knows where those may end up. I've also been out flying with an old friend of the channel, the DJI Mini 2, alongside the DJI Mini 3 Pro and the Mini 4 to bring you this update video. So let's get into it. So DJI have given us the new Fly app 1.13.0 for mobile phones, whether it be Apple, Android devices, and of course the DJI RC and RC2 screen controllers. Now I want to quickly talk about the screen controllers because there's a couple of things to mention. First of all, we have a brand new feature called FlyShare, which allows you to transfer any files such as screen recordings, cache files, or full resolution downloads directly from that controller to your mobile phone for easy sharing sharing onto social media. We now also have the ability to uh, update the DJI Fly app with the new firmware that's been launched and that allows you to basically update the Fly app independently without needing a full uh, firmware update. So that's always really, really good. Now, when I was out testing the DJI Fly app on the RC controller, I did notice something quite odd. Um, it seems that when you come to the speed modes, um, instead of it displaying N for normal, it has reverted back to the previous name, which of course is called position mode. Now this little naming issue is basically a characteristic of the DJI RC and RC2 controller. If you are flying with the DJI Fly app with the RC N1 or RC N2 or just generally a mobile phone, it does display correctly as in the N mode. So just something to be aware of because I know a few of you uh, have been talking about this particular topic. So starting the test with the DJI Mini 2, I do like to always make sure I test the drone's ability to select a target and execute a quick shot. Now, mainly the reason for this is because there was issues in the past, okay, uh, with the drone actually selecting a target and wouldn't execute it. Now, one thing that was quite interesting is on my test flight with the DJI Mini 2, as you can see, I'm trying to select a subject and when I go to execute the drone in quick shot, for some reason it was having absolutely none of it even cancelling that then redrawing it starting again for some bizarre reason it would not execute the quick shot i had to fully cancel that uh, change position so it's a slightly different target then yes it did eventually do it so if you do have a dji mini 2 please do let me know in the comment section below whether uh, the quick shots are selecting correctly for you because i did have a little bit of trouble overall going through the menus on the dji mini 2 everything was exactly the same as we would expect now the dji mini 2 is kind of end of life okay so i wouldn't expect any new features but overall the drone flew absolutely perfectly fine okay and of course during my return to home test it got all the way back exactly as it should now once again flying the dji mini 3 pro for the first time in quite some time once again that flight went absolutely swimmingly uh, this was conducted on the dji rc controller and as you can see apart from this mislabeling on the position mode uh, versus normal mode which it should be i found the flight pretty uneventful one thing i did notice that when i was executing my quick shot is when the drone was actually returning back to its original position okay for some bizarre reason it started to raise the gimbal that's a behavior i've never really seen before when i was also performing the exact same test with the dji mini 4 pro the drone showed me the exact same behavior so once i'd executed my quick shot as it was returning back to its 
its original position, for some reason, uncontrollably, it started raising the gimbal. Of course, this isn't any particular issue. It's not going to cause any flight issues or anything like that. Uh, you can just merely uh, lower the gimbal once the drone has returned. But just something for you to be aware of because it's slightly different behavior to what was expected and what's been seen previously. Both the DJI Mini 3 Pro and the DJI Mini 4 performed absolutely perfectly on their return to home and landed pretty much on the spot where I took off from. So that's always good. Looking through the, of course, features, which of course, Looking through the features on the menus for both of these drones, again, no particular new features. We know the DJI Mini 4 Pro is now compatible with the Goggles 3, which is, of course, always nice if you do have the Avata 2 or, of course, the Goggles 3 and you want to utilize that DJI Mini 4. But aside from that, I can see no particularly new features. Now, one thing I mentioned in the beginning of the video I just want you to be made aware of is there is a new feature within the DJI Flight app, which I have covered on my DJI RC and RC2 video which I'll leave a link to at the end of this one which essentially allows DJI uh, to basically troll through your flight logs um, without basically requesting you to download them and send them to them directly. Now, my video on that has received a mixed response. Some people are saying um, I'm being too paranoid. Other people are saying that it's absolutely fine. Of course, it just helps DJI when it comes to a uh, potential DJI care refresh claim or warranty claim. That's absolutely fine. But for me, as far as I'm concerned, um, I just like the idea of having control of what DJI are checking. Um, absolutely no problem them seeing, obviously, my distances, my heights or flight times or anything like that. But those intricate black box details, which you do not see in the flight logs, which, of course, is stored on the drone. Basically, DJI can access them at all point if you have this authorization turned on. I will be keeping mine turned off. You never know where that data is going to go. Um, and ultimately, even though I trust that you are flying, within the local laws and regulations you know at the end of the day i just don't like the idea of being completely spied on all the time so i'm certainly leaving mine off if and when as many of you have mentioned it comes to a dji care refresh claim um or a warranty claim i'm more than happy to just download that particular flight log or then possibly at the, that time then allow them to access my flight records no problem at all but aside from that i just wanted to make you aware and I'm pretty sure you're aware by now, but just in case you are not, of course, by launching the DJI Fly 1.13.0 allows support for the new DJI Avata 2 FPV drone. So that wraps up this video. Please do give me all of your thoughts and comments in the section below. I always love to hear your feedback. If you did like this video, please do give it a big thumbs up. It tells the YouTube algorithm more people just like you might want to watch this video. Subscribe if you're awesome. And until next time, see you again soon.